I have always believed in angels. I think they are around us and that we need them. And I am also a collector, as you can see now, you look at my pieces. I have old pieces of fabric and pearls and sequins and beer caps and uh, buttons and embroideries and so on. And I think it's interesting because every small piece has its history inside it. And recycling is also very important to me. And it is also the tradition in patchwork because it started with recycling of old pieces of fabric. And uh, my angels are fighting for freedom and justice and joy and uh, fighting against tyranny and violence and they are also fighting for Mother Earth. Uh, I had one big problem with my angels. I didn't know how to make their faces if they should be strong and angry. And then I watched an interview in TV with Anita Ekberg, if you know the Swedish film star. And I thought that that was just the face, her face. Beautiful and blonde and angry and tall. So, I, so since then, all my angel faces are her face. And the funny, she was born in Malmö, where I live now. And I had a workshop uh, about uh, with uh, making angel, angels. And then I discovered to my joy and, and surprise, because I had no idea that two of the ladies in the workshop were relations <coughs> to Anita Ekberg. And they had photographs together with her and uh, talked about her. They were, the two ladies were cousins and I think they were nieces to Anita. And, uh, even if I make three pictures, three quilting, then I very much uh, like to use your cabin as a background. Yes, there she is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was a great actress, I think. And you, uh, I use your cabin a lot because I, it is possible to build a picture with your cabin as a background. That is always a square you can start with. It's a picture with Nordic women. So Anita is standing beside the Queen Margarete of Denmark. Uh, these are two American ladies. Marta Koston with a Koston flower. I think I used them to send signals between uh, warships. And then there is Mary Anderson with the <coughs> white windscreen wipers for cars. A great invention. And they have used uh, old fabrics for their dresses. I use beer caps a lot because I think they are neglected <laughs> in this world. You just pop them off and then you throw them away, but they are made by designers and artists. And many of them are, yeah, well, I like them. Oh, this is a self-portrait. I started to make a calendar of the month. And this is me in the month of March. And it's... Also recycling, it's an old jacket with a mm, round things. And there is a beer cap from my hometown where I was born, Höganes. And uh, yes, I think it's rather like me. <laughs>
You do you like it? Yeah. Yes, I like it as well uh, with my pink hair. Uh, the Higgs particle is was discovered by somebody called Higgs and he got the Nobel Prize for it. That, that is the beginning of everything or life. And then I, when I read about it, I thought, well, what would the world be without little old ladies? So I wrote the Higgs particle. That's me, isn't it? And it's an uh, old, an um, old fabric for her dress, and then it is chiffon to her hat, with I had warmed with a warming pistol. You know what I mean? You heat it, a heat gun, uh, heat it, and then the uh, the fabric melts. And you can get wonderful little hats. <clears throat> but you shouldn't do it inside. It's better to do it outside. But because once when we did it in my patchwork group, we had a, had a fire, alarm. fire alarm going in a very big building. <laughs> and this is my little lady of steel. And she holds her heart, and the heart is made from a fabric with a leopard pattern. So that's to, so you can read, be a leopard at heart to the right. And uh, yes, uh, a lady of steel, it's uh, embroidery floss that my daughter Wanda bought in America. Japanese embroidery floss with stainless steel in it. Spun into the yarn. And I am very fond of her. Because uh, she looks very determined, I think although she is very small. Yes, <laughs> it happened to me. It is a really a rather private piece. But I got very ill one evening when I was alone at home. I got a terrible pain. So I didn't know what it was. So I took a taxi to the hospital within 30 minutes. And they took me into the emergency and then they told me that I had something called pancreatitis, and it was my pancreas or something was wrong with. And I was in, a, in this pain the whole time and suddenly the pain stopped. And then I had a feeling that I was divided into pieces and that, that I was uplifted. And I thought, I remember it very clearly, I thought, I have read about this, I have seen it in movies, and I know, now I want to know what is happening. So I asked the nurse, did I die now? And he said, she said, no, that was just morphine. And I think she giggled a little. <laughs> and, and I remember I wasn't frightened at all. It just was this that I wanted to know exactly what was happening. And then I was, it is also to say thank you to the hospital where I was very well looked after during the time I was there. Yes, and I remember the little nurse who came into our room late, late one evening and whispered to us, do you, would you like pancakes? We whipped cream and blueberries. Oh yes, we said all of us, and then we ate our pancakes. And it was very nice. And there is a word, Kirsebay or Kirseberg. And I met a small man who uh, asked me where we were. And I said, we are in the hospital in Malmö. 
Yes, yes, but uh, where is that? You see, he said, I am from Kirsebay, and I have never been anywhere else in my whole life. And Kirsebay is also the place where Anita Ekberg was born. I like letters. That's the name of Brookstein. Mm. I like letters very much. I like how they look and I like to make them. And then there is this fantastic feeling I get when I make letters that I can express everything I know and want to say and want to write with the help of 28 in Sweden, 28 small signs or 28 small drawings. And I, I think that is fantastic when you start to consider. It's one of our greatest inventions, I think. I start uh, in the top left corner and then I go to the right and downwards when I make a picture. Always. And I make them piece by piece. So I make one piece ready, I embroider it and sew it, embroider it and uh, embellish it. And then I put the pieces, sew them together. And it, uh, angels of wrath are done that way. I do a lot more nowadays. Uh, hand sewing because it happened to me they, a couple of years ago I was diagnosed is that the right name? diagnosed with Parkinson's disease you can see that I'm trembling and I was very worried at the beginning but then I discovered that if I use my hands and sew with them then they are still so I can sew, and it's easier even if it's slower than to use the sewing machine. So, well, yes. And uh, you asked me also uh, if I have changed the way I work when I am older, and yes, I have, because I am not always so satisfied satisfied with the technical result so, and my hands are not trembling but my fingers are stiffer and I must also learn to accept that I am much slower when I work but otherwise it's okay when I have finished the piece and I think that this is okay and this is what I think what I wanted then I that is the best part of course and also I have my conversations with my little ladies and we, they must agree as well and one thing that is important when I make all my ladies in portraits is this it sounds very simple but it isn't I must like the ladies I sue You get help sometimes in your life and you realize it long ago, but long afterwards, what a good advice it was. For instance, uh, I had an uncle who was a potter and I worked at his pottery one summer. I was very young at the time and I should decorate a piece. And I didn't know how to do it, so I, asked, so I asked him what he thought. And then he said, I remember it very clearly, you decide what you want to do, and then you do it. And that's the best advice I have ever got. These old items, small old items, they have a past as well, and there is, they have a history. And uh, some pieces are cut from old dresses and shoes. And, um, and if you find a small stone at the seaside with a hole in it so you can sew it, then it's, 
it has his history. So everything must mean something. So I don't use so many new items to decorate. I uh, love old things. It is just a great joy and a great freedom. And I can do what I want to do and like to do. And uh, nobody can tell me what I should do. And it's, and then you get a lot of friends all over the world. And uh, I think that the patchwork and art quilt movement, but that is just a personal thought, that it that must be the biggest social movement in the world, one of them, I think. You can always find ladies who make art quilt and patchwork. What do you want viewers to take away from your work? Joy. Yes, joy. And this has been a fun thing to look at. And perhaps it means a little more. But joy. I know when I have been at a, an exhibition and I am happy when I leave, then I know it has been a very good exhibition. I uh, saw once an exhibition with American art quilts in Denmark many years ago and that was a revelation to me it was the first time I saw something by Susan Shai and it was called Elvira on the Nile and it was a long pink Cadillac and that was it changed something in me that you could do whatever you like that it was wonderful I hope that people can see that there is a, a serious message behind the smiling or angry little ladies. I hope. Yes, what I am doing, it's always, it's nothing from outside. It comes always from inside me. And it has to come out. Huh? And it has to come out. You've yes, always it said has... to me that it's something that just has to come out. Yes, it has to come out. It does. 